All right, sports fans, we got our big Super Bowl show coming up today. Jeff and I are going to break down the strengths and weaknesses of both the uh, the offense and defense of the Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos. And we're going to make our predictions for you to drop your money on this week. So stay tuned for the Pendulum Super Bowl special. <laughs> So, 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 Jeff, my my prediction for the game is gonna be whoever whoever gets the ball into the end zone more to score the points is gonna win the game. That's all you need to know about the Super Bowl. It's what John Madden is gonna say. So we don't have to cover any of that. So we'll go right into our comics, toys, news, and movie stuff. So we'll just skip all the Super Bowl stuff. That's good. Yeah. Do you weren't prepared for Super Bowl discussion, Jeff? I have like volumes. I have tomes of stuff. Dude, you have a binder? Yes. Offense and defense plus special team subsections. Well, that's cool. Actually, the Super Bowl will be the only game I've watched this year because I don't have cable. Yeah. I am going to get the NFL Network, though, next year, I think. Really? I have unlimited uh, internet now, so I can afford to uh, stream some games. Hmm. I like I, I like football. I've always enjoyed football. Um, I enjoy watching a game of football. I can certainly do that more than a game of baseball. Yeah. So, right. well, just jump right into our reviews for the week, yeah. then, eh? What'd you read, Jeffrey? Uh, I only read one book. Slacker. Yeah, but I have two trades. Okay, so, you're forgiven. So I'll do whatever. Anywho's, uh, I did, uh, Super Dinosaur, number 21, by... The, yeah, apparently there's 20 other issues of this. Why am I just finding out about this now? Because it's by Robert Kirkman. Oh, my God. So he does good stuff. He does. Uh, Brian, Robert Kirkman and Jason Howard, who has illustrated Astounding Wolfman and Dead at Seventeen and other goodness stuff. So it was good, but again, jumping into the middle of something, <laughs> not the best idea. Hard to follow suppose. that narrative with all those dinosaurs that you don't know anything about. Well, <clears throat> I am. How super is this dinosaur? He's pretty super. Okay. Um, I liked it, actually. This is not bad, actually, as, a, as a, an introductory issue, because they don't really... It's a kid's comic. It's written for kids. Features a kid named Derek and a guy who's a super dinosaur. It's not a guy. It's a dinosaur. How, do you spell, how does he spell Derek? With a K. Like I? D-E-R-I-K? No. E-K. <laughs> That's Weak the real. Sauce. No, it isn't. The only real, real way to spell Derek is D R I K. No. Peace. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That's the. That's what we call a shout out. That's, that's lame. That's lame. That's very lame. Where am I kidding? He doesn't even watch the show. <laughs> uh, well, for doing shout outs, I'll do one later. <laughs> okay. It's a pretty good book. Basically, Eric's mom is in a coma or some some sort. They haven't really explained that. She's in this uh, one of those like tubes full of water, you know, that you see in like X Men and all sorts of stuff and all the other books, you know, where they put people in like stasis and stuff to keep her alive and I don't know whatever they're doing with her. Anyway, she needs some sort of isotope to live. Is it unobtainium? I don't know. So. <laughs> Derek, Took you a second. Derek and Super Dinosaur head off. They're heading out to, I don't even know where, to get this isotope. Looks like the desert. And then in the desert, they see all their dinosaur arch enemies. So they go in their ship, because I guess they have it. They get it. It's cool. But then the issue ends with them facing off against all the other dinosaurs. So hmm. I don't know. It's fun. It's a kid's comic. And it's written really well, because it is Robert Kirkman. I would like to catch up on the first 20 issues. <laughs> it has intrigued me enough to do so. It's always good when you just randomly jump into an issue of something, and you're like, you know what? Yeah. This kind of seems for me. Mm -hmm. I like when books can manage to do that. Yeah. So I've read everything else of Robert Kirkman's, basically, except for Tech Jacket and Brit. I haven't read Brit. <laughs> but... I've read all Invincible, Walking mm -hmm. Dead, all his Marvel stuff. So, read quite a bit. He's a good guy. Good writer. So anyways, check it out. Super Dinosaur. Awesome. Read them all. Not just number 21. <laughs> read them all. What do you got? 
Uh, I read a couple of books this week. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a back to back. I read um, Cataclysm uh, number four. That had the whole shadow cover spoiler reveal Is it earlier Cataclysm in the week. Four, Cataclysm like a then ultimate. Ult- Cataclysm the Ultimate Spot Four, whatever. It's yeah, the okay. one. That five-part mini that's uh, the main line in the book now trying to tie up this volume of the Ultimate Universe. Um, I was going into it with some high hopes, but, you know, tra- uh, cover giveaways and uh, trailer uh, yeah, yeah. cover misleads, once again, ruin a book for me. Mm. Uh, you know, it would have been a pretty decent story. Bennis and Bagley have always been a good team in the Ultimate Universe, but... Uh, we have their little MacGuffin-type plan to uh, defeat Galactus, which involves um, making Kitty Pride giant size to electronically disrupt Galactus's world engine oh, machine, man. and then punch him if she feels like it. So, not really an awesome plan. It sounds so simplistic. Yeah, and they could have just done that in the regular Marvel universe. Yeah, they're they kind of did that similar thing with Cassie Lang when they made her big to fight the Skrulls when she was fighting the Skrulls in Secret Invasion. Mm. But um, yeah, this it just feels like a, chi- a cheap, quick plan. But things kind of go to hell when uh, Galactus uh, gets turned onto their plan and then starts attacking the Triskelion, uh, which is basically just a flying helicarrier now. Mm. So I'm not sure when the hell that happened. Uh, the cut co- the cover has like Cap dead on the cover, being <laughs> cradled by Spider Man. Doesn't even happen in the issue. That's awesome. Uh, you see Cap fly a Quinjet into Galactus's mouth, just like in Transformers the movie, where uh, awesome. they fly the plane into uh, Unicron. That was all I was thinking while reading this issue. And then Cap obviously parachutes out. Spider-Man's nowhere near him at the time. So, so he's no, alive. Yeah, no one actually dies in the issue. So once again, bait and switch cover Orion check. sounds wounded. Yeah. And then they have the panel there where someone yells at um, uh, Sue Storm to protect them with a force field. So you know no one bit it after that. It'll be one person, that like a shield agent somewhere. But uh, the final issue's coming up, and they're going to probably magically pull this out somehow. So, yeah, I was really disappointed. I read this issue first. I was looking forward to it, to seeing what was happening. Yeah, it was just, it felt like half an issue that could have been done in half the time and then just put somewhere else in a better story. Mm. So uh, a little disappointed. Um, I have I've been I've liked the Cataclysm stuff that they've done up until this issue. This yeah. one was felt like a throwaway. It's just really disappointing. So uh, to cleanse my palate of that, I went into uh, Earth Two's uh, second annual by uh, Tom Taylor. I can't say his name without thinking of Tool Time. Oh, Tim the Tim, yeah. Tool Man. Tim yeah, man. I just every time I hear his or see his name printing, <laughs> like it's Tom Time with yeah, it's yeah, it's just me. But, uh, yeah, so this issue explains the origins of uh, Earth 2's new Batman. Mm. And, you know, I guess it's not original who he is. Spoiler, I'm going to spoil it, so watch Isn't out. Spoiler. The dad or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. Thomas Wayne. Um, he, through some BS workings of Leslie Thompson, Lo- Leslie Thompson from Earth 2, survived the shooting, went into hiding because he was kind of tied up with the Falcone crime family uh. in, the, in the, their era. The cool, one of the coolest things about the book, though, they actually timestamp events. That's cool. So, <laughs> like, um, in the se- it was like in the 70s when they were killed, and then it's 94 when Batman met back up with his dad. So they actually put timestamps on dates, which was kind of interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, you see the Waynes in the 70s hanging out with the Falcones on, like, drugs and having, like, kind of mischievous youths and that. Then they have Bruce, and they kind of... Martha's like, we're done with this shit. We're done. So they don't really let them go. So they have, like, hitmen try and come after them. And that's what Joe Chill in that world actually was. He was the final solution to off the Waynes so they didn't spill the beans on the Falcones. Oh, yeah. Which, again... I I've always liked the idea that that Batman's parents were killed randomly. I don't uh-huh. like the fact that they were targeted. I like, yeah. but you know, different DC universe, different rules, different ways to tell a story. I'm fine with it. So yeah, he meets back up and realizes that that, that it's Thomas Wayne. Yeah. The cool twist to this story is that this Batman is like a huge beef guy with some levels of super strength. That comes from Miraclo. Oh okay. So they actually mention was it Rex Taylor? Yeah. They actually mention him in the book, so I'm hoping later issues of Earth 2, it comes back around where Rex Taylor's pissed that this guy's taking his drugs, and maybe that's how we get the Hour Man into uh, the new Earth 2. 
So that was one of the cool things. And it uh, just ends with uh, them going back out on their mission to, you know, defend Earth 2 from uh, Darkseid and their corrupted Superman. So it was, I enjoyed this story. As I said, it's not exactly a shocker that it's Thomas Wayne. Yeah. But, you know, the way it's done, some of the different layers that they've added on with the parents being in with the Falcones and the Miraclo, it was nice. It was a cool, mm. it was a cool story to read. There's a bait and switch there about who Batman might actually be halfway in the issue. Uh, the art's really great. looks fantastic. Um, he looks crazed when he's on the Miraclo drug, which is kind of neat to see. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, Earth 2 has been one of my favorite books since it debuted. I wish James Robinson was still writing it, but yeah. Tom Taylor's done a great job uh, picking up uh, the story from Robinson. And, yeah, it's it's really, really solid. I really enjoyed it. So uh, I highly recommend um, checking out the Earth 2 annual if you're interested in a, in a good alt version of uh, Batman origin. Cool. And I'm hoping when they do the inevitable Earth 2, Earth New 52, whatever crossover, yeah, whatever it's called. if that comes to play at the end of Forever Evil, we have Owlman Thomas Wayne have a showdown with Earth 2 Batman Thomas Wayne. Mm. I think that could be cool because he'd be seeing a version of one of his sons that's still alive and then the Owlman Thomas Wayne would be seeing his father, who he hated, alive. Mm -hmm. So that could be some cool story to ground there for, for somebody to tell, whether it be Jones or Taylor or uh, Tom yeah. Taylor. So uh, I got hopes for that. But yeah, I enjoyed it. So it was, No uh, hopes for Cataclysm? At this point, I don't care. Yeah. Like, I've been with the Ultimate Universe since launch. Uh, I have every issue of Ultimate Spider-Man and most of the um, X-Men, all the Fantastic Fours. Yeah. And... You know, they've gone back to the we're shotgunning things on the wall to see what sticks. It used to be this was the alternate to the 616 universe. But the 616 universe with the writing staff that I they know. have right now, it's, it's so good. much better. Yeah. It's so much better than it ever There's has no been. There's no need for the ultimate universe There, there is a need for it. I am I'm I like it for being the ground where they can, you know, do the different things. But do the different things in a way where you're not just rehashing what's been done. Yeah. That was the Ultimate Universe's problem when it first started. Like, look, here's the ultimate version of Insert Guy yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But, like, when they had Miles Morales, yeah. that's a perfect example of what you can do with the Ultimate Universe. Yeah, it, that's, that's a fantastic true. thing to do. You could do... It's, the, it's what they're doing with Earth 2 in DC. You have the similar things, but twist it, change it, alternate versions of it. Don't just... The mm -hmm. same thing happened to a different guy with the same name in a different universe. You could change it up, twist it around, keep them the names to keep the whole legacy aspect, but, you know, change up how it happens, who they actually are. Yeah, like, nobody really cares if Electro is, um, Max, uh, fuck, I can't remember his name. No, but it could be Max Dillon. Could be somebody different, just happens to become Electro in a different way. It, that's what you can do with alternate universe mm -hmm. stories. That's what DC used to do with the Elseworld tales. And that's what the Ultimate Universe should be. The, yeah. the relaunch, the Ultimate Universe is coming up. I mean, up. Marvel does that in their What If series. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. I mean, you don't really, you still don't really they're, need. They're, they're maybe taking that type of route now with the new versions of the Ultimate Universe books that are coming out. Like the yeah. Ultimate Fantastic Four has Iron Man, uh, Sue Storm, Ben yeah. Grimm, and Deathlock. Mm -hmm. So, no, Machine Man, sorry, not, Machine, not Deathlock, Machine Man. Like... Okay, that could be an interesting Fantastic Four combo. No, no Sam, Will, Sam, Will, Sam Wilson, Iron Man, Sue Storm, and um, Machine Man. Are you sure? <laughs> Shut up! I'm trying to think who it was. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's definitely Sam Wilson, <clears throat> uh, Machine Man, Sue Storm, and Iron Man. Yeah. And they have like a cool new logo for the Fantastic Four. Mm. And the Avengers are now not the typical Avengers, like... Uh, Spider-Man is now on the Avengers, Cloak and Dagger, this new character, um... I can't remember what her name is, but she has these explosion powers. And oh, yeah. uh, they've changed Spider-Woman to Jessica Drew, that's the clone of Peter Parker. Yeah. She's now going to be Black Widow. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that could be kind of interesting. Um, I'm not sold if I'm going to keep going with the Ultimate Universe. It's a couple of extra books a month that I'm not super enjoying. So, yeah. we'll see. We'll see how the number ones catch me, and we'll go from there. Yeah. But, overall, not happy with Cataclysm 4. Real happy with Earth 2 Annual 2. All right. Um, cool. So this week I read two oh, Christ. trades, both from Valiant. Actually, I read four Valiant trades, but I'm only going to talk about two. 
To point out, though, Jeff actually does do other stuff rather than just sit here and read books. He's that's, just a very quick reader. That's true. You plow through a lot of books. I do. I do. Yeah, I did read uh, four trades, but uh, and I did two on my blog. One was Bloodshot Volume 4 and Shadow Man Volume 3. The two uh, other ones are Exo Man of War Volume 4 and Eternal Warrior Volume 1. The good thing about the new Valiant Universe, compa well, comparatively speaking, against the new 52 universe, is Valiant does it good. Now, uh, so a key difference, one might say. Yeah. Well, that, that's the I thing. I can't think like, of Exo Man of War without thinking of that really bad uh, Exo Man of War versus Iron Man game. Mm, yes, I forgot about that. Yeah. So did everybody else. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. The thing, the thing with these books is, even though they roll them out slow, they didn't do 52 in one shot, their creative teams are pretty much set. They don't change, except the odd time they need a fill-in artist to catch up or something. So usually it's the same writing team throughout the whole thing. The editorial leadership on these books the editors do a great job of keeping everything consistent throughout every single title. So if uh, Exo is in his own book, then he appears in Bloodshot, or he appears in something else, he sounds exactly as he's supposed to sound, he looks how he's supposed to look, he acts like he's supposed to act, nothing is different. Hmm. Like, across every title, every character remains who and how they are. So another way in which it's different than the DC universe. Yeah, like it is really that's one of the things awesome. I've, that's one of the things I've noticed the worst with Wonder Woman. Yeah. With her appearing in her own book and Batman Superman, Batman uh, Superman Wonder Woman and mm -hmm. Justice League, it feels like three different characters. Yeah. See, and with these ones, it's the same character. Hmm. Every book, every title, whether they cross over or not, they're all true to themselves, right? They all sound how they're supposed awesome. to. Awesome. So that's what I really like. Uh, Exo Manowar is a, uh, those don't know, a character from the past who got abducted from by these aliens, etc., etc., but time passes differently on these alien ships, so when he eventually makes his escape, he's now in present day, so he's like this man out of time type of deal. Where Eternal Warrior is uh, a guy also from the past, but essentially he was Eternal, it's in the title, hmm. and uh, he's lived every day of those years that oh. Exo has missed. Uh, volume 4 of Exo Manowar sees him coming home to Earth after defeating the Vine ships and slash homeworld and freeing his people. He wants to make up a new homeland and reclaim it over in uh, Europe there. Uh, he wants Dacia to come back and be the land of the Vis Visigoths. But, uh, of course, in present day, everyone owns everything, so you can't just stake out a piece of Russia and call it your own. That was my dreams. I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, Eternal Warrior is a book essentially about family, which I really liked. Um, it's got his son and his daughter in the book, and it deals with his... Uh, role as the Earth's protector, so to speak. And, uh, I mean, it's only four issues. Each trade is four issues, but it's really well done. The art is fantastic by uh, Trevor Harrison and Clayton Crane. Uh, it's written by Greg Pak. Does fantastic work. Oh, Greg work. Pak. Yeah. Why are you so awesome? I know. He does a great job on this book. Um, it's probably... Maybe my favorite Valiant title so far now, Eternal Warrior, and it's just started. So, uh, check out both of them. In fact, check out every Valiant title. They are well worth your money. Um, they do universe building correctly. <laughs> they do it how it should be done, with quality, with care, with time. They don't shoehorn stuff in. They, they don't, don't futz it up. Yeah, they do it right. And the distinguished competition could learn a thing or two from these guys. <laughs> so check it out. Uh, Exo, Eternal, Warrior, great stuff.
and the trades are very cheap if you pick them up that way. $9.99 for introductory trades and $15 for a regular trade. So, can't go now, wrong. The pricing point on them is <clears throat> what gets me the most about Valiant stuff. Same as Image. Like, mm -hmm. DC charging me like 30 bucks for 6 issues. Exactly. Like, when these guys are basically giving away an issue a trade. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. So And they got top talent on their books, so it's great. Mm -hmm. so, check them out. Quality books from Valiant. Yeah. I should read some of them. We have a little comic -y news this week. We got week. a little comic -y news. Uh, you uh, might have read this book. I didn't. I just read about it. The end of Green Team, the Team Millionaires. I actually did not read the book. And you know what? Neither did anyone yeah. else. That's After why eight it's issues, canceled. no wonder. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, didn't Gail Simone write that book? No. I she was. No, it was... Uh, Franco oh, okay. and well, Simone, somebody, I don't recall off the top mm. of my head, but it was, I guess it was the only, or one of the only, or probably the only DC book outside of the top 300 comics per month. It was so, the bottom dweller of the new it was 48, the, or whatever the, the hell it's called now. the lowest selling book of all time. So, <laughs> of all time. Well, of the new 52. Yeah. Books, or the new 39. Whatever, whatever it they're is. At, right yeah. Now. But, uh, yeah, it... They set up a relaunch of a of a new book that we all know is eventually going to happen. Yeah. They, the guys that run this millionaire club of teenagers, wanted to buy the Titans, mm -hmm. lock, stock, and barrel. So, they're going to be a new Titans book, which I assume will be the name of the new series or yeah. new Teen Titans or whatever. Some form of Titans. Yeah. But uh, isn't this the whole story of X Factor now in uh, Marvel? That is true. Corporate guy buying. He the bought the whole name. thing, lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, way to innovate, DC. Yeah. Good job. Well, Maybe. it's hard to say. Maybe they had it in the pipeline for a while. I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure Double. this X Factor was in the pipeline when they announced that Green Team was a book. <laughs> I know. I Somehow know. I didn't think they foresaw the end of it after eight issues enough to write that ending. Yeah. Uh, so. The other uh, bit of DC news that I had this week was uh, the new uh, teaser poster that they put out. This is why I like DC's teaser posters. They're posters that have really cool art on them mm -hmm. and feature, you know, the characters that are going to be in the book. Oh, yeah. Unlike Marvel's, like, higher, mm -hmm. stronger. Like, what the, uh. Yeah. But uh, the poster was for Abandon All Hope. I'm not sure that's going to be the name of the or, or tying into the story plot or anything. But it's a really great poster featuring a, just a ton of characters. On a very River Styx esque looking scene, from what it seems like. Yeah. And you've got just a ton of characters, heavy on the dark side of the DC universe, like Zatanna, Constantine, uh, the Demon, uh, Phantom Stranger, all there. But um, one of the cool things is they have um, the question basically dead center in the middle of the photo. Yeah. And so we finally get some stuff with the question since they kind of dropped him off the face of the earth when Trinity War ended. True story. So, like, True story. Well, it was like nothing about those three now. It's like, it just went into Forever Evil. Mm -hmm. So, I want to see some more stuff about those three, hope more so with the question. I've heard uh, Pandora's title's just kind of meandering right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's cancelled as well, isn't it? No. No. Oh, Remember, it's right. that big blight crossover. Oh, yeah. We'll have to cancel it after that. <laughs> but, uh, DC with their everything has to be brown and dark and gritty, the question is in a brown and. He basically looks like John Constantine with no face. Yeah. So, like, they look like they're wearing the same outfit. Like, put him in his blue suit. Just, who cares? Do it. And uh, there's some cool little, like, head-scratching things in this poster as well. Like, you got Swamp Thing with Aquaman's trident. That Aqu was cool. Yeah, man. Aquaman's, like, being pulled down under the ocean forcibly by something. Mm -hmm. You've got what looks to be a Larfleeze construct um, wrapping up um, John Constantine. So that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And uh, one of the other things I noticed, like, Buddy uh, Socks the Cat was there. Who's that? Um, the little uh, Maxine's cat, Miss Socks, from uh, Animal Man. Okay. But Maxine and Buddy aren't anywhere near. Mm. So, like, are they kind of going to be, you know, the MacGuffins they're fighting for in this story? Or because yeah. they represent, you know, one-third of the natural order of the world. And you've mm. got the green there as well in Swamp Thing, so... I don't know. I'm I'm kind of looking forward to it. There's a lot of good stuff going on in this poster. And 
I'm kind of looking forward more to that than I am the rest of Forever Evil. Huh. So it's really dragging on. Only by a lot. Like a lot. Only by a lot. I'm actually tired of it. Yeah. We 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 know that now that Luther's joined the Justice League, so that yeah been spoiled. That That's was gonna spoiled be neat. Pretty heavy. But, yeah. yeah, it was gonna be a neat thing. Yeah. If it happened in the book, we didn't know about it. But you know. Yeah, yeah it would have been nice yeah. as a surprise. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next. Got uh, some video game stuff. Uh, we're Yay. still we're all waiting through the desert of. Uh, Post next gen console release, no gamedom. Yeah. Everyone still. It has been a little dry. Yeah. So we all got over our hype, and now we're back to our GTA fives and Batman's and. I guess the new Tomb Raider was on sale for twenty bucks. Eh? Where? I can't remember. Somewhere. The new Xbox One and PS4 edition, because where I went, it was sixty dollars. Yeah. For a game that's been out for months. No, nope, just... sorry, I'm thinking the wrong game. Yeah. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Four, five, four, nine, whatever, whatever the latest one is. I that was on sale. Oh, okay, bucks, sorry. Well, yeah, I went. I was hunting around for some network stuff to get my network back up running at home. I was gonna pick up Tomb Raider. I'm thinking, all right, worst case scenario, this game's gonna be forty bucks. Yeah. It's been out for months. It's basically just a spit shine version of it, running at a bit higher frame rate with some yeah. increase. In, it looks it good. It looks good. I'd never played the original one oh, or really? the original version of Tomb Raider, the new the uh. relaunch. So I'm, I'm gonna pick this up for my PS4. Sixty bucks. Sixty dollars. Yeah. No. No. Uh, a few weeks back, uh, Microsoft had a deal on it for like fifteen bucks on 360 to download the um, last gen version. Oh, yeah. Why would you charge full new game price for this when it's just um, a new coat of paint on it, essentially? Yeah. So, And it was sold out of some of the PS4 copies, which apparently is the far better copy or oh, version yeah. of that game. Oh. Like, heavy, close-end, 60 frames a second version. Mm. The Xbox One, of course, a little slower. But, uh, yeah, just I wanted to buy it. Not for 60 bucks. Yeah. So a little disappointed. <clears throat> um, we're getting a uh, Sly Cooper movie. Who's that? Uh, it's a video game. Uh, one of Sony's uh, almost mascot tier level characters from the PlayStation 2 and 3 days. All right. It's this little thief uh, um, raccoon guy. Really oh, cool. I saw yeah. a mention of that. And yeah. uh, They were cool games. They looked fantastic. They had this cool cel-shaded style. The movie's CG, though. Mm. You had a cel-shaded game, which looked like a great cartoon, and you're going CG just because, what, it has Everything's to be? CG. Yeah. So, unusual. Could could be cool, though. I mean, the, the visual style of that series has always been interesting, so it could be kind of neat, especially if they do some of the shadow-hiding stealth stuff in the movie to emulate yeah. some of the games. That could be cool. Uh, we do have uh, one big game on the horizon I'm looking forward to called Bravely Default on the, on the 3DS and 2DS. Gotta yeah. throw that out there in case people don't know. Basically, it's a Final Fantasy game that's not called Final Fantasy. Oh, it right. looks fantastic. The music's great. Uh, it's got a great battle system that's not as confusing as it looks like it's going to be. It's a uh, class switching system that looks pretty good as well. Some really solid music. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to it. It seems to be a, a classic JRPG, and mm. it's it's going to be a, it looks like a fun game. Good story. Good some good uh, quality time you can put into the game. So I'm looking forward to that. Me too. Uh, bit of bad news for Nintendo. They've been financially struggling for a bit. The Wii U just isn't selling anywhere near what they'd hoped. Uh, yeah. Awada announced he's taking a 50% pay cut to avoid, like, I guess, layoffs. And there was another interview at the press conference they did where, where their financial numbers are released. Oh, yeah. They think the biggest problem is the gamepad for the Wii U mm -hmm. isn't one of the focal points. And a lot of people think that the gamepad is just a Wii accessory, so they're not selling the Wii U's. Uh, well, frankly, if that's the case, whose fault is that? I know. You named your crap so confusing to people mm -hmm. that, of course, that's what they're going to think. DS, 3DS, 2DS. Yeah. Like, come on. I understand having a consistent brand. That's fine. But you dropped the ball so hard when it came to the Wii U and the Wii, naming them so similar and not making it as clear as you possibly could. Like, new naming should have been the way to go. Yeah. And they're not price cutting. I mean, the Wii U is already a fairly good deal compared to the other three, two systems. Yeah. You just need things for me to play. I want to buy a Wii U. I really do. Yeah. I don't want to just replay a game I already beat I ten know, years how ago. how many Mario Karts 
do you need? They're well, all so similar. Yeah, but they're always fun. But yeah. give me that game. It shouldn't be two or three years into the Wii's life, Wii U's lifespan before I get a Mario Kart. Uh -huh. Like, where's the Metroid? Like, you have all these great franchises, but you don't space them out enough. You you yeah. don't put anything out. Then when the system is hitting kind of a lull, you just dump them on everybody. Yeah. And, Pretty like, sure. their branding is broken. Uh -huh. Like... You, you, if you were to put out a Wii U model colored like an NES, people would buy it because of the yeah. nostalgia factor. There's one idea. But, you know, give us the games that we want to play. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, be smart about it, guys. Come on. Yeah, nothing Nothing they, they haven't been doing that in a while. Yeah. And they're out of touch. There was a developer that was doing an interview, I think it was with Kotaku or NeoGAF or somewhere, they were saying when they were working with Nintendo to develop some of their games and that, they actually got an email that was saying when talking to the Nintendo um, staff or their higher-ups that make the decisions, uh -huh. refrain from mentioning PlayStation Network or Xbox Live because the people at Nintendo don't use those services, so they don't understand the context of how you're putting oh things. God. How do you... If, if, you, if you're not... If you don't play those Scope games or yeah how are you supposed to compete if you don't at least know what the other guys are doing yeah that shows complete lack of foresight when it comes to your product yeah. and that that was one of the worst things i've ever read about how far nintendo has fallen yeah. they they probably back in the day knew what sega was doing with their systems oh yeah for sure and like how do you not at least know how these things operate and how they develop they deliver to their customers so you can not necessarily copy but at least know what they're doing mm -hmm. and do your version of it and do like, improve on it make it your own Without knowing what the other guys are doing that are succeeding, how are you able to innovate on your own? Yeah. So it was just that was one of the most telling things I've ever read about Nintendo recently, mm -hmm. and it was sad. <clears throat> they are a sad company. Yeah. Now. The 3DS though is like killing it over every other handheld, you know, other than phones, but different mm -hmm. market. Uh, Nintendo is going to be licensing their characters out to different partners, but they won't be appearing on other platforms. Oh, yeah. So like, there's that. The Hyrulean Heroes game that's coming out, which is basically a Dynasty Warrior set in Hyrule. Yeah. That's kind of what Nintendo's going to be doing. So they're only going to be on the Wii U, 3DS, things like that. They're not going to have like an iOS version of Mario uh. or anything like that. But they're going to be licensing their characters out to different developers and that. So that could be something that could be interesting. Could be getting some interesting things along those lines with those characters done by different developers. Uh -huh. Could be interesting. I don't know if it'll be enough. To say. We'll wait and see. I want to buy a Wii U, but give me a reason to. Yeah. I don't want. I don't just want to play Wind Waker in HD until Smash or Mario oh, yeah. Kart comes out. Give me a reason to buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, On to some better news. <clears throat> speaking of Nintendo, this right. really have a lot to do with Nintendo. Toy news. All right. Um, I am in the last few months become a huge fan of Japanese import figures. Me yeah, as well. Their price points are a little higher than some of ours, but you mm. pay for what you get. True. Although, I don't really buy the figures. I buy statues. You're the statues. Kota yeah. Bukia statues. Yeah. Yeah. Kota Bukia's got that cool Avengers line coming out. Yeah. 45 bucks for some great Avengers statues based on Granov's work, so mm -hmm. they'll be on my shelves. But, so. uh, yeah. So. yeah. Especially the Hawkeye. He looks awesome. Um, SH Figure Arts, it does the, um, the monster line of figures for Godzilla, which I actually got an email about while we were recording. Amazon's got a bunch of sales on them. I'm mm -hmm. really tempted to buy some of the Godzilla stuff. Yeah. But they're expensive, so I gotta hold off. Uh -huh. But, uh, they do the Dragon Ball figures as well, and I got oh, four yeah, of them yeah, yeah. at home, because they're great. They're really great. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're doing a Super Mario figure. It's a fully articulated little Mario in the figure, SH Figure Arts form. Huh. And uh, you get like a little Goomba that comes with it, a mystery yeah. box, and a coin, and a mushroom. He's got all, tons of articulation. And they're also making diorama sets. So they have a warp pipe, a couple of smash oh, bricks, and more little bad guys. So you can build a Mario stage background. Uh -huh. So yes, please, thank you. Bring it out. I will buy it. Uh, I have my Samus and my uh, Link from uh, Figma, and this SH Figure Arts Mario will go great in my little classic video game design display mm -hmm. on my shelf. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, with Dragon Ball figures, SH Figure Arts is also putting out an Android 18 figure. 
Oh, yeah. Which is cool. She has, like, uh, these cool other hair pieces, so she can do flying poses with her long hair blowing back in the wind, which is kind of cool. Uh-huh. She's got, like, the typical uh, additional pieces, hands, fists, faces, things like that. In a new twist, she actually comes with pieces for a different figure. She huh. comes with a new face plate for Krillin and a new hand to hold the auto-destruct uh, button that Krillin had on this little uh, pad that he was going to use to destroy Android 18. And uh, the face that he comes with is like the shock surprise face when she kissed him from the anime. Mm. And yeah, it's the first time that they've done that, where a figure comes with pieces for a different figure. And it's really cool. Uh, Android 18 is a really cool character from the anime and the, man- and the manga. So nice looking figure, cool pieces, and bonuses for a figure you already might have. So oh. nice move. Nice move. Indeed. So let's uh, spin this now around to uh, <laughs> TVs, movies, and interwebs. The uh, first thing I want to bring up is uh, the Empire covers for X-Men Days of Future Past. Oh, 25 covers? 25 covers! That tells you how glutted that movie's going to be. Oh my god, I know. And one of them is a character that's not even in the movie anymore. Really? They cut Rogue. Oh, that's right. She got cut from the movie. And a description of the scene that one of the scenes she was in sounds awesome. And I wish she wasn't cut. It'll be on the home release. I know. Fantastic. Great. But apparently she might actually have had her powers, or versions of them, like flight and strength. Oh, yeah? So, cut from the movie. Awesome. Great. Couldn't find one of the other characters to cut? Like, oh, I don't know, the horrible-looking Toad? <laughs> like, he looks like a Goomba from Mario Brothers. Yeah. Awful. Really, they should have just cut half of the characters. Yeah. It's Quicksilver looks ridiculous. Yeah, I heard about that, too. His hair, awful. Hey, his name's Quicksilver. Let's put him in a silver jacket. Mm. Yep. Nicely done. But there are some really cool photos in that shot, like Warpath. I know. Looks great. Bishop, great. Blink, great. Mm. That new Magneto costume. Yeah. Pants weird. Rest of it, great. Helmet. Helmet looks awesome. Yeah. Like, there are some cool things. Xavier in the hover chair. Mm. Havoc looks weak sauce with some, like, really bad photoshopped lines over him. Yeah. William Stryker, again. Yeah, William yeah, Stryker yeah. has appeared in so many X-Men movies. I know. How is this <laughs> possible? He's a magician. The Sentinel looks really cool. I even don't mind the future Sentinel, which, you know, to me looks like Nimrod. Yeah. Could be a movie version of Nimrod. So I mean, the co- the covers do look great, but yeah. there are some characters. Who that... is going to buy twenty five yeah. issues of that? Make I mean, somebody will. I'm somebody sure. Somebody will. One of them is Brian Singer. That's true. Brian what? Singer will buy yeah. twenty five issues. No, what he's on one of the covers. Is he on one of the covers? Yeah. And. You know, I don't want to bring this up to make it seem like I'm putting any hate on Peter Dinklage, which is completely false. I love Peter Dinklage. He's a fantastic actor. Yeah. They did such a poor job mm. with his cover because of his stature. Yeah. The typeface covers him completely, and there is so much empty space above his his person on yeah. the photo cover that it looks dumb. Mm-hmm. Like... I don't know if they could have if they had changed how it looked they could have been like oh they changed it because of his stature and his height. Yeah. No, you change it to highlight the strengths of the person in the photo. Peter Dinklage is a great character actor. He's a fantastic. He's a great guy from all impressions as well. Funny as all get out. Yeah. But the photo that they put on the cover is so terrible and doesn't do Peter Dinklage any credit. Uh. Bad choice for how they put him on the cover. They should. They obviously needed a cover because he's a main part of that movie and a great actor. But how they did it, poor choices. Okay. But overdone. Twenty-five covers. Bad. Some of the bad stuff in the movie looks I'm really hoping, bad. Some of it looks really good. I'm hoping the movie is okay. I'm hoping it's okay too. Yeah. Hoping. We got uh, more Marvel stuff. Deathlock comes to Agents of Shield. Yep. Sure does. You're gonna watch now. Nope. Oh. Sure ain't. No. Oh. Like, I think it'd be kind of cool, like having an actual Marvel superhero character. I know, character. and I was actually pretty excited when I heard that. Yeah, I love Deathlock. I thought that might get but... you to watch it. I want to see what he looks like. Yeah, and how exactly. Do I want to and... see what he looks like yeah. first. I gotta catch up on and it. And then I want to hear a review of someone say, "Hey, this is actually written okay. It's worth the time now. Yeah, it's worth my time to invest forty-five minutes of my life that I will never get back before my death." <laughs> So, yes. Before the inevitable heat death of the universe, am I wasting my time on this show? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, like, 
J. Augustus Richards' character had his arms and eye blown out or whatever and got an eye implant, so people were kind of theorizing that Deathlock could be where they were going, and yeah. kind of looks like it is. I know. Could be neat. Cool. We'll see. Did you see uh, Jesse L. Martin, Wally West, in the new Flash show? No, I didn't know they cast Wally yet. They did. Jesse hmm. L. Martin, formerly of various hmm. Broadway shows and Name does not ring a bell. Law and Order. Um, so, yep, they went against, uh, I don't even know what you want to call it. They went against the book, because, well, in the comic, Wally West is your typical, average, white guy with family, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah, he's, um, what, Barry's love, yeah. Barry's wife's I like cousin, it. niece, thought, uncle, Yeah, niece, whatever. I like nephew. it because they went against the grain and went, like, the, um... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Luther. What's his name? Idris Elba? Idris Elba. They went the Idris Elba route, like in Thor. So Jesse L. Martin, African American, as Wally West. I like They're doing a lot of, um, we're casting people based upon their talent, not necessarily skin color in that show. Exactly, and that's what I like. I really like Jesse L. Martin. He was great in Law and Order. I didn't care for him in Rent, because I didn't like Rent. But, overall, I think he's great. He is older, too, though. Huh. So he'll be older than Barry in the movie, or the show, I should say. So they cast a, uh, uh, who, who's playing, um, the sergeant now in the, in the show? Like, Iris West is, uh, they, 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 they cast against established, um, ethnicity with her and the police captain as well ah. from Central City, who's also a West, apparently. Hmm. But they cast some guy that's apparently going to be eventually Zo or Reverse Flash. Yeah. They cast Edward... Uh, See, yeah, Edward I like Fane. that. This Flash show could actually be really good. Yeah. Because it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. And I think uh, casting it on talent is the correct way to yeah, go. Yeah, it's how it should go. Yes. Yeah. But, again, Wally West is older than Barry, so I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. But we'll find out, I guess. Yeah. Could be cool. I'm hoping. I'm. I want to see the pilot. I'm hoping it makes series and we get to see it. I think it'll make series. Yeah. Arrow. Arrow's Arrow. doing well, like really well. Yeah. So I'm sure Flash is going to do very yeah. well. So. You see, uh, BBC's first official shot of Capaldi as the Doctor. Eh, who cares? I like the costume. I think the color scheme works nice. He looks. He looks rather Vegas showy though. Eh, whatever. Uh, I like it. Like the weird, the weird like hand gesture thing was a little bizarre. We'll see how, like, that's the thing. For most things, like promotional shots and stuff like that, I don't give a crap. I'll I wait till like I seeing, see the show. Yeah. And I like seeing the costume it. design, because, I mean, so. it's adding different uh, character beats to it and seeing how they change it up from, from actor to actor, so it's not just the same guy in a suit all the time. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of like some of the embellishments they put on. The color scheme looks kind of nice, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Red. What do you got? Uh, what you got? Did you see... I don't know if you ever read these when you were small. Choose Your Own Adventures. I love those! So they're making a Choose Your Own Adventure movie. How? I don't know. How is... I don't know. Is there going to be push buttons like America's Funniest Home Videos where you push a button? Do you want the guy to jump off a bridge? Press 1. Maybe. So I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. I'm sure it would work better on home release than it would Oh, totally. Because, like... Use your remote control to select, like, paths for guys, like... But supposedly, does the... it's going to the big screen, huh. so... Does the heroine run up the stairs away from the murderer? Press up. Does she head out the front yeah. door? Or press down. I don't know. It's going to be strange. That's kind of cool. Interactive movies. Strange. Uh, the one thing I am looking forward to... The one thing. Is uh, the live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. Hopefully... I'm not. Well, it could be really good. It could be. Like get the Remember that live action Akira movie? No. Why? They did, no. They did the uh, Matrix really well. Yeah, then they did Matrix two and three. <laughs> well, I'm I'm speaking of effects wise, action wise, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and right? then they did two mm -hmm. and three. The effects in the action was good. Have you watched them lately? Yes. Yes. Mm. Maybe the script, not so much. <laughs> but effects wise. No. They're pretty innovative, and... Remember the Akira movie we almost got with DiCaprio? Uh, I don't know what you speak of. <laughs> you I don't do. know what you speak of. You know exactly what I speak of. <laughs> Anyways, it could potentially be really good. We have pretty good technology these days in film and cinema, so... It could potentially work 
or it could be it a flaming pile not. of dog crap on a plate, yeah. or it will not. Yeah. You know what? There'll be a really great version of Ghost in the Shell. Mm. The one we already have. I do like the anime. It's really well done. I so really like I, it. we've dodged two bullets with Akira <laughs> and Cowboy Bebop. I yeah. don't need Ghost in the Shell. We I, do need Ghost no. in the Shell. Let yes. this let this flame out and fall apart like all the yes. others should. Did. Ghost in no. the Shell. I uh, read Marvel's fast tracking Cap three already based upon the hype and the good screening uh, response yep. to uh, Winter Soldier, yep. and uh, Marvel just also hired Christoph Yost to be one of the screenwriters of Thor three. It's Christopher Yost. Chris Christoph? Christopher. 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 Whatever. And uh, matter. his writing partner is yeah. well there. Uh, Which awesome. I know. Like yes, please. Seeing uh spoiler. Craig seeing, Kyle. Craig Kyle. Yeah. Seeing uh Loki uh continuing to masquerade maybe as Odin. Perhaps. Doing a little crown of uh, lies there. Version yeah. of Loki, which would be awesome. So, yeah, good writing team looking coming up. I'm having fast track on Cap 3 could be interesting. Mm -hmm. So, hopefully, it's one of them up against Batman Superman. Hopefully. It'd be awesome. That'd be so good. Then it would really be a battle. Who would come out on top? Yeah, I think I would love to see like an Avengers and a Justice League movie in the same year, but I I don't see that ever happening. I think our timing is too. I don't know. Work. DC putting their movie on that day in 2016—that's ballsy, ballsy. It's not going up against Avengers now, is it? No, it's going up against an unnamed Marvel movie. Unnamed Marvel movie, yeah. Right? I so. think um, I could be. Yeah, I could be strange, but well, that's the thing now. Will they put? An unknown quantity up against a big gun, or, or they want to just roll nail it out, out of the park. Cap or Thor up against it, right? That's or, interesting. I never or, actually thought of that. Or pay Downey Jr. like eight gazillion dollars for Iron Man Four. Because we all know that no matter what type of movie Batman Superman is, it's gonna do probably Aveng near Avengers money. It could. It depends. Just what it looks with like. the delay, with Ben yeah. Affleck, you're gonna have people that want to see it just yeah. to see it for either the train wreck that it is, yeah, exactly. or like the immense raging. Will it be nerd an Avengers owners. or will it be a Transformers? Yeah. <clears throat> Either way, I think it's gonna make huge bank. Mm -hmm. And you're, I never even thought, of, yeah, Marvel might want to put one of their big guns up against it. Well, yeah, there's no. They, they won't be able to get an Avengers out. You don't want to put like Doctor Strange up against it. Doctor Strange will yeah. tank against it. That Doctor Strange would be an October, November movie like Thor was. Yeah. You gotta put a big gun up against it. Yeah, but out of the two, Cap or Thor, which one is financially the bigger gun? They both made around the same money. Yeah. I mean, Thor two did financially better than mm -hmm. Thor 1, but did it do Cap 1 money? I think it did more. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I still enjoyed Thor 1 better than yeah. Thor 2, and probably better than Cap. But... Yeah. Well, that's a good point. I never thought of that. So, I don't know. We'll see. they got to put something big up against it, because yeah. DC's calling them out, basically. Calling them out. Calling them out to the yard. Bringing their milkshakes. <laughs> DC's milkshakes brings all the nerds to the yard, and they're like, it's better than uh... yours. So, um, also, I know you want to see this. I'm not too gung-ho about the show or anything, but uh, Better Call Saul is, I guess, definitely a go. And it's Urban Trout, some... baby! Yeah, got Mike Urban Trout. Yeah, buddy! in the show. So, I'm, I'm uh, in. I am in. It should be okay. We get more but... Hugh, and we get more Mike Urban Trout. I am in. Yeah, I know. It just... No, but that, the Breaking Bad had a pretty definite ending. It's cool. I'd rather see some sort of sequel. Obviously, he wouldn't be in it. You could Saul's never do still around. You could never do a sequel to that. And I don't want to. No. I like the open-endedness about Jesse. Yes. So I don't. I don't want to see them no. give an ending to Jesse. It. It <clears> was <throat> Saul. It was. It was Walter White's show. Oh, I know. I know. But I don't want to see a prequel, really, because I don't know. You I know what's like, coming up. Yeah, but. They're not going to be leading into it. I mean, Jesse and oh, Walter White are apparently going to have some little sh shots on the show. Mm -hmm. But Saul was a great character. Um, Ermin Trout. Can he great... hold his own? I, I think he can. Can he hold his own? Really? I think he can. I think it can be a really good show. Like, um, it'll have to get some sort of really good, I don't know, villain and or some sort of Breaking Bad had ongoing a couple of villains. plot they were both... to really hold people's right, interest. Right, and Vince Gilligan can do that. We'll see. And I think he's going to do a great job. I'm surprised you didn't bring this up. Your boy? Your boy? Vin your Diesel? Boy, Vin Diesel? Your boy? Yeah. Your boy? Number one on the home release charts with Riddick. And gets a fourth one. 
Possibly. He they announced, say they're interested. Yeah, yeah. They, because basically what? <laughs> that movie was made for what? Like $12 million? Yeah, for like made, nothing. Made like 90 and then killed it at home a video. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm, they're going to want another one out of him if they can make it on the cheap with him financing half of it again. Yeah. Which I'm assuming he will say no to because of the risk he took on this one. But it paid off. Oh, yeah. Paid off so, huge. I haven't seen it. Apparently, it's Pitch Black 1.5. Uh, I so really I'm... enjoyed it. There yeah. were a couple things that's pointed out in almost every article on the internet about it. Like, Is it uh... the banging her straight part? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> Classy. There, There's that. That seems against Riddick's character. It does. As much of a, a quote-unquote character that Riddick has, mm -hmm. that seems against it. Yeah. And it had... Um... Batista. What's his name? Um, Batista. McCoy from Star Trek in there. Carl Urban in it for Carl eight Urban, seconds at yeah. the beginning to, to figure out, like, throw away the entire second movie. Eh. But he was good in it. I mean, Carl Urban would be good setting up the corner, like, throwing out a piece yeah. of garbage. I liked the film. I thought it was pretty good. It's a little little campy, a little cheesy. You could just watch Pitch Black and but just have a better time. It was good. I liked it better than number two, actually. Number th no, I I enjoy I, for some reason I really enjoy that movie. I didn't mind number two. I don't mind any of them. But uh, I just I love how the ludicrous nature of that movie, but it just it works and it goes with it. It's not ashamed of it. Yeah. So that's that's why I appreciate that film. Mm -hmm. uh, what else we got? We got uh, oh this is great. Taken three, eyeball yeah! and Forrest Whitaker is a bad guy. Yeah, possible bad guy. They haven't uh, even said. <laughs> how many times is this family going to get kidnapped? Maybe he gets kidnapped. He was kidnapped in the second one! Was he? Him and his wife! That's right, he was kidnapped. Like, what are they going to do? Kidnap their baby? That they had at 60 uh, years old? I no, don't know. Now it'll just be random strangers, and then the family has to go in as a team and rescue them. So we're talking like an A-team Scooby-Doo cross here with, yes. with Liam Neeson? Yes, and Maggie Grace, and... Who is far more famous than she deserves to be. Why? She's not good. She's good. She's not. I like her. She's awful and lost. She was good and lost. Awful and lost. She's good and lost. Shut up. And, uh, <laughs> you saw them. I saw them. The entire world has seen them by now. The new Ninja Turtles design leaks that came out, the Mar <clears throat> Marquettes that David Michael Bay was looking at on set, as well as that poster and some of the toys from the uh, mm. European Toy Fair. We're obviously going to be seeing more stuff coming up soon. I don't hate them. As an avid turtle hater who hates all things turtles, I do hate them. As but well. would you do but you hate them as much as you thought you would? They don't look as terrible as yeah. I thought they would. And as as an avid turtle fan who has loved the turtles since I was a wee little lad in short pants, hmm. uh, I don't hate them as much as I thought I would either. Yeah. Uh, some of the color choices are weird. I know blue and orange color wheel style is the new rage. Like that's why movie posters are all blue and orange. Yeah. But Michelangelo has this orange bandana and blue pants. It looks weird on a green turtle. Mm -hmm. Blue and orange work together, just not in between green. Yeah. Little odd. Uh, Raph with the full skull um, thing looks cool. Uh, he's all got bandaged up and everything, so that looks kind of neat. Leonardo has this really awesome, like, samurai style woven stick chest plate, which looks badass. Uh, Donatello has glasses and also, like, a Ghostbusters uh, night vision thing, so he looks like a Ghostbuster when he on the poster uh -huh. thing. The only thing that throws me off, the nostrils, I'm not a big fan of, and people are complaining that they have lips. Oh, yeah. And I read an article about why they give CG-rendered 3D characters in live-action movies lips. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, they're, they look... they don't look right. Yeah. And, I mean, people are like, oh, that's why Optimus Prime had lips. Optimus Prime had lips because Michael Bay is an idiot. He had yeah. a faceplate. You could have just left the goddamn faceplate on. exactly. If yeah, you had exactly. to put lips, Bumblebee could have had lips. Not a problem. But you just... You leave the faceplate down for Prime. Anyway, but the turtles being open face and having mouths and talking, apparently yeah. if you don't have human-style facial features in the lips, mm -hmm. it look your brain is like, no, it can't process it enough. Yeah. So, okay, I can kind of see that. I want to see some footage of it the other way to be 100% accurate. But, you know, I don't hate the designs. Uh, the yeah. Shredder looks very alien in his design. Um, I know the original script that Michael Bay said was a lie. They were aliens. 
Mm-hmm. And they scrapped it. You didn't know. You scrapped it because it was a bad idea and people hated you for it. But the ooze that made the turtles was event- was originally from a different dimension. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is where the Shredder comes from and he looks like a brick shit house, like nine feet tall with blades everywhere. Yeah. So he'll be a CG mess. But all in all, I don't hate the design on the turtles. I've seen far worse designs on characters. I've seen better designs. This doesn't look bad. Well, <clears throat> one thing is for sure, it'll be as crappy as every other Turtles movie and cartoon and comic has ever been. Shut up. Crap. You're crap. crap. It'll be way crap. better than Turtles crap. 3. Crap. 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 You didn't even loop that. That was just Jeff saying crap over and over again. And the bar <laughs> here looks exactly the same. It's kind of impressive. It is impressive. Nice. Nice timber. I am impressive. Nice timber. Timber, so. whatever it is. And a uh, little disappointing sad news to all the Lego enthusiasts mm. slash porn enthusiasts. Uh, Christy Mack announced a uh, contest on her Twitter. The person that made the biggest, best Lego creation for her home. So yes, um, she would. Uh, they would receive a special, a special prize from Christy Mack that she's uh, known for. Okay. Uh, apparently the Lego lawyers had a bit of an issue with this. Hmm. So that contest is now over. So, uh, I gotta return some building sets to Toys R Us. Oh. You're disappointing in every way. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> um. I aim to disappoint. <clears throat> so, uh, did you watch the Grammys on Sunday? Why would I watch the Grammys? Because they're awesome. Hello. I did watch the uh, Ryu beating up um, Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was kind of awesome. <laughs> so, there was many performances. Some hey, what were... happened at the end? I so, heard well, hold something. On, hold on. Some were really good. <clears throat> um, the show opened with Beyonce and Jay-Z, and uh, I thought it would be your average Beyonce thing. She's, I don't know. You can take her or leave her, right? I don't think she's that great. Yeah. But uh, she's lost a lot of weight. She looks fantastic. And everyone's complaining about... Yeah, she had a baby. Yeah, everyone was complaining that she was showing too much of her bum. So what? Everyone does it on friggin' music videos nowadays. So who cares? It's like she's wearing a bikini, basically. She wasn't wearing a bikini, but it shows as much bum as a bikini yeah. does. So who cares? Jeez. Stupid controversy for controversy's sake. Yeah, so they got to write about something. Um, there was a lot of good moments, a lot of good mashups. You had uh, Kendrick Lamar with uh, Imagine Dragons, is probably one of the better performances of the night. Uh, Daft Punk with Stevie Wonder and Pharrell was pretty good. A little strange. Yeah. A little strange, but it was alright. I didn't mind it. Um, what's his name there? Uh, Growing Pains, son of Growing Pains guy there. Oh, the. Uh, Robin Thicke. Miley Cyrus Grinding Pole? Yeah, Robin Thicke teamed up with Chicago. Which like was a city? little different. No, the band. Uh, the brass band. You listen to all that 70s stuff, you know Chicago. Oh! What? Yeah. They're, not a, they're not a brass band. Whatever, they have a lot of horns. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they teamed up with Chicago, and that was actually not bad. Um, they wheeled out Willie Nelson, Chris Christopherson, Merle <laughs> Haggard, <laughs> and uh, I like all of them. But it could have done with a little rehearsal, perhaps. Did Willie Nelson say anything racist? No, no, no. We're just saying. Uh, Willie was the best out of the bunch. But it was like, Willie would sing, and then when it was someone else's turn, like their cue to pick up and go, they'd miss it. (laughs) So then... Well, they are old. It was silence. There'd be, like, some silence. And then Willie would start singing again, and then he'd look at him all confused, like, how come you're singing again? Well, it's because you weren't singing, right? Like, come on. It was it was nice to see them. I do enjoy them separately or together. But, but this didn't they're work. at this point, I think, where... Stop. It's, yeah, it's time <laughs> to maybe retire. Or at least folks. thinking about it. Willie can still go. He was the by far the best out of the bunch. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's that's enough. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some other good ones. Carol King and Sarah Bareilles was good. Uh, Taylor was alright. Katy Perry was actually pretty good. I heard that. Um, <clears throat> there was another moment. Oh, Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. Who cares? 
I don't mind either of them separately or together as well. But that song Queenie Eye, garbage. Garbage, garbage, garbage. Sorry, Sir Paul McCartney, but Queenie Eye, what were you thinking? What were, what you, were thinking? you thinking? I guess supposedly, according to one of my coworkers, it's based upon some sort of game that British children play. With, I don't know, stuff. That's a great song to play at the Grammys. So basically you made it about an obscure game that kids in America do not play. Nor know about, nor have any context exactly. to. Exactly. And I'm watching it, and my wife and I are listening to it. We're like, what the heck is he singing? Like, and he's just singing like, shout, O-U-T spells out, jump and pout. I don't even know. Like, is he just making words, like, s getting words Basically, to rhyme? Basically, this entire performance seemed to cement the notion that we lost the wrong Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> wrong. Wrong. No, I'm pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> that's not how it goes. That's not, that's not what it said. It was just like... Why didn't you just sing one of your hits? You know, that would have been much better. Because Paul McCartney even goes through, I don't have any of them. Metallica was really good. They sang one with a did. classical pianist. Uh, yeah. I can't remember what his name was, but he was really good. Um, so together, the mashup with the classical piano yeah. and the song was actually Metallica worked very good. really well with completely Orchestras. opposite orchestra music. Yeah. Like their uh, S&M with the uh, yes. San Francisco Philharmonic is still one of my favorite albums I love ever. Album. The yeah. No Leaf Clover version. Yeah. Fantastic. And then come to the final performance of the night where Nine Inch Nails, first time at the Grammys, Queens of the Stone Age, first time at the Grammys, with Lindsey Buckingham and Dave Grohl on drums. Awesome, awesome show closer. So Nine Inch Nails started it off with Lindsey Buckingham, and then they sang their song, sort of. Yeah. I mean, Queens was still there. And then uh, went into Queens, and then they were playing their song. But of course, show ran long. Let's cut them off with uh, advertising and commercials and whatever. And uh, Trent Reznor, not too happy about it. I think he lost his shit, did he? Not really as much as he might have in the 90s. But <laughs> he uh, basically went on Twitter and just like... Uh, Essentially, like, thanks, Grammys, big F you to you, sort of thing, right? And then yesterday, was it three days later, received an apology for it. So, <laughs> that's all right, but cutting off this, like, awesome, great big super group. Yeah. For first the time, Toyota yeah, commercial. And for two of them being the first time on the Grammys, kind of stupid and kind of sucked. And it was awesome. What we did see... Queens and Nine Inch Nails together yeah. is awesome. But, yeah, but how are we supposed to sell Toyotas if we don't have exactly, the commercials? I don't know. Or whatever it was. Yeah. It's I think it was an airline, actually. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, now. Anywho. You don't want to set up, upset Big Air. This year's Grammys was pretty decent, except for that. Mm -hmm. And Queenie Eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was good, except for the parts that weren't. Yeah. Anyways. That's it for our show today, I yeah. think. Yeah, this was chock full of goodness. Yeah. It's like a Snickers. So, if you could be so kind, subscribe to our channel. And also, if you're kind, follow us on Facebook. You, uh, the Pendulum on Facebook. I have a blog, telltalemind.com. Gary has a blog, the Wagnerock at WordPress.com. Yeah, which is periodically yeah. updated. Once I do finish watching The Wire, it'll be more updated. Cool. I am um, actually physically addicted to that show. Yeah, I've heard it gets like that. Uh, you want to talk about good writing? Yeah. Uh, the Wire. I'm on Twitter, the Telltale Mind at Twitter. Gary's the Wedding Rock on Twitter. And, uh, I don't know, we're just everywhere. Because we're awesome. Send us some letters. We'd love to reach into our bags mm. and pull out your words. I was going to say shout outs. Remember shout outs? Shout, shout out to the Comic Spectrum for featuring us on their yes! podcast page. Amazing! Thank you very much. Thank you so, so much. That means so much to us. Thank you very much. And uh, shout-outs to all our regular listeners, including Mike D, regular listener who often comments. Mike D! And, uh, you know, again, just shout-outs to everybody. We love everybody. Yay! Uh, so until next week, we'll have uh, more trade reviews, comic reviews, toy reviews, video game stuffs, and... Uh, 
Everything. And bits and comedy and hilarity for you, the Lords of Laughter. And no Super Bowl. Well, we might tell you who the winner is if you don't watch it. Yeah. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to tell you who the winner is. Spoiler. All right. All right. Gary will let you know who yeah. wins the Super Bowl. Football! I like football.